Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome. Today we're going to do an unboxing of a review copy of March on the Drina from Princeps Games. Now this game, in a nutshell, Serbia, World War I. It starts in 1914, it can go as long as 1918. Two to four player game, where Germany, Austria, Hungary, and Bulgaria team up to try to take Serbia out of the war. Let's jump in, take a look at the components, and offer some impressions. As we start out this unboxing, I want to call attention that this is the first war game produced by Princeps Games. You may recall that we just looked at Freezing Inferno, which is a game that just went through its successful Kickstarter by them about the Finnish-Soviet War, the Winter War. So this is taking a look at the first game that they've done in the war game genre. Now there is a lot of stuff to look at in this box. It's uh, one of the things I think that I, I would say defines Princeps Games, at least from what I've seen so far, is there's quite a bit of creativity to how they approach war game design. So I think we'll see that kind of evident in this game as we look at it as well. Rulebook starts us off. We have uh, 32 pages, which might sound hefty, but one of the cool things they did here, these look like all the people that helped kind of with the design of the game, and they've included some unique, uh, they put their heads on different soldiers and uh, units from the battle and stuff like that, which is pretty cool. And this actually takes up uh, pretty much about half of the rule book. So the last, uh, up to page 20 is the rules, and the last 12 pages or so are these uh, uh, tributes to the people who helped make the game a reality. I thought that was pretty cool. Now, the rules themselves, uh, if we take a look at them here, I read through them the other night. I'm gonna say, this is a, a very light complexity war game. I think you can pick this up and get into it pretty quickly. It took me about half an hour to read through them. A couple of unique concepts that I'll probably wanna wrap my head around, but um, you know, nothing overwhelming, very clear so far and seem like they're well done. I mean, you never know until you start playing, but um, you know, relatively, I'm gonna go, if we put us on a complexity rating, I would say probably a two and a half, three, probably a three out of 10, I think would probably be a reasonable place to put it. Now, um, we've got here, oh, I should also say there is no uh, solo mode. Uh, you can play, you can of course play both sides. There doesn't really seem to be anything at all except for the setup, which you can do in a hidden fashion, but there's, there's ways around that. We'll talk about that when we get there. I don't see any reason why you couldn't play this both sides solitaire. And if you're playing with four people, one person takes each of the central powers and then the other person takes Serbia. And then you, you do variations on that if you're playing with less than four players. These are the coins, much like we saw in Freezing Inferno, there is a production capacity. So if you take an opponent's city, you reduce their military capacity, their capacity to produce units and reinforcements, and you increase yours. And this is kind of that monetary system, if you would, that tracks how much you've been able to generate in, and you hold on to these, and you use these to buy your um, reinforcements as you go through. So that takes a look at that. Now I'm going to hold, save the map for last because I, I want to hold that off a little bit, it's gonna take up a little bit of space. Another evidence of clever, clever. So this is a calendar and it stands up just like a calendar you would kind of like a little table calendar. This is your turn marker. I thought this was really clever. So if you look at it like this, you can see that, you know, here we are in January to April 1916, and then it gives, and I'll show a close up on this too, it gives you some historical background, and then a number of the turns have unique characteristics. So in this one, January to April 1916, Serbian artillery is minus one on the attack, and the effect activated retreat through Albania. There's a special mechanic where Serbian forces can retreat and build up strength as they go through Albania. And so each one of these basically is kind of one of the turns. As you come to another turn, you flip it over, starts in July 1914, and it goes all the way up to 1918 if you make it that far. There are conditions by which the game can end before that. But so clever, I've never seen and it makes you think, why have other games? Maybe, maybe there are other games that have done this, and I just don't know, but it's the first time I've seen it anyway. A bag for stuff, always appreciated. Now here is the, um, the double blind kind of setup. You have this pad of the map here, and then basically you write down your forces where they are, and each person does this at the beginning of the game, each player does this, then you show these, and this is where you set up your unit. So you don't know where your opponents are gonna set up until you write them down on this pad of paper. This was in, um, on Freezing Inferno as well. And I suppose if you were playing Solitaire, for example, you could kind of generate like three or four of these and have them ready, three, you know, three for Serbia, three for the other for the Central Powers, and just use them that way so you don't really quite know what's coming at you. But uh, yeah, so this is the, you know, nice big pad. I'm sure there's more available online. You can photocopy them as well if you run out and things. Now, much like uh, Freezing Inferno, this game uses a unique token system to determine the strength of a unit. And I think these here are those tokens. There's four of these. I'm not sure why two are thicker than the others. 
I confess I'm not, I don't quite understand why that is, but I'm sure I'll figure it out as I dig in more to the rules. And these basically punch out, these are little black, basic little kind of rubbery tokens almost. And this is what dictates the strength of the unit. So the unit strength is basically its inherent combat power and that however, plus however many of these are underneath the unit. So if you had an infantry with strength of two and three of these under it would be two plus three is five. And then as a unit loses power and strength, you're gonna be taking off these different tokens until it gets down basically to the unit itself. And then when that's wiped out, the unit is gone. So four of these, uh, kind of big and thick and it looks like they'd be pretty easy to handle. And now the units, really like the artwork on these. We get uh, two, Sheets, basically, well, a sheet and a, a two-thirds, maybe, uh, printed on both sides. And the combat values are generic across all the units. So there's infantry, artillery, there is cavalry, and then there are unique generals. Each of them is named, which is pretty cool. And we'll talk a little bit about that as we get to look at the general cards coming up. But uh, we have forces here. Uh, if we look at them, I'll show some close-ups, too. We have Serbian, then Austro-Hungarian. German, and there must be some Bulgarian. Here's some Bulgarian artillery down here in the middle. Really nice, kind of glossy and stand up. And the reason these are the shape they are is we put these in stands and they go on the board. And there's no stacking in any of the hexes. So it's gonna be one unit to a hex. Again, kind of getting at the idea here that this is a relatively straightforward kind of, um, you know, not be, I wouldn't say maybe, I mean, I guess I have to play it to check, but it's, a, it's a, you know, it's not tremendously complex. You're not gonna be dealing with big stacks of units. I think this is gonna be a game that, that plays fast and, and and plays kind of clean as you go through it. Now we come to the four kind of player aids, if you would, and these have basically all of the information that you need for uh, the, the kind of fight. So infantry strengths, attack and defense, and then movement, and how many you start with in the battle, and the price it costs to make them. And I'll show a close up on this as well. And then you've got your generals and their names and what their special abilities are here. So it's a handy little card that shows each empire's basically special characteristics and all the information you need basically to get the, behind the math behind your units. And again, uh, you know, not tremendously uh, complex in terms of the, what you're looking at here. You know, you've got again three types of units: infantry, cavalry, unique generals, and then these. These are the city values here on the left-hand side for your military capacity. And of course, Serbia has a lot because they're outnumbered three to one here in this battle. All right, so there we take a look at that. Now, I think these, there's two of these and they're identical and they're printed on both, well, printed on both sides, but these are just generic markers. I think these are, if you would like to use these instead of the stand-up counters, you can use these counters with the same system. You're gonna be putting those circular units underneath them to designate their strength. And I think this is an option, basically, if for some reason you don't like the stand-up counters in the game. So uh, I'm not quite sure, I would assume green is Serbian, uh, black must be Germany, red probably Bulgaria, and blue Austro-Hungarian Empire. And so this is another option that you could use instead of those stand-ups here. Then we have a few more game markers. Uh, these uh, markers here, I believe you use these for controlling cities. You should be dropping them down for, for that or perhaps some of the other elements in there. And then this, I think, is when a unit moves through Albania. I'm not quite sure what that does yet, but we've got some game markers there. And here we have the economy in a box. So this is the national military capacity chart. And for this one, we can see basically the starting positions here of each of the empires. So Bulgaria and Germany start out on the same. And then as you take and lose cities, this is going to shift. And at the end of each turn, you go through here and you get this much capacity to basically reinforce your army as you go along. So a very simple kind of production me mechanic to help uh, kind of make the game kind of reinforcement track and build in this kind of economic level to the game as well. All right. Now, we're not done yet, so let's take a, here we go. We have uh, stands over here. So these are basically these units will, the units that we looked at before, you punch these out, put them in the stands. So it's a very vertical looking game as you get through it. And the different colors represent the different nationalities. And we're not done yet, still more stuff. You'll notice there are no dice. We get some more baggies here too. I don't know if there's anything there, some more baggies for storage. We get uh, no dice though. And instead of dice, we have, these luck cards, and these I think are to mark the box. I'm not quite sure there, but uh, these luck cards basically range from zero to plus three. And so instead of rolling a die, you're gonna pick one of these up. And this is gonna be what modifies the combat result there. So basically it's gonna change the strength, I think is how it works of the unit. And then you compare those results and immediately get your result to combat. So it mitigates, I think, the luck of a die roll system in a game. Yeah, your, roll, your results are gonna span basically from zero to three, and that's gonna kind of determine which way the battle swings or not. So uh, very little kind of cool card mechanic there. And lastly, these are really cool. 
Um, and I assume, I don't know if these are authentic pictures or not, these are all the generals that fought in the war. And so the generals give your units, and these are kind of very vinyl, nice printed cards here. So here we're looking at Austro-Hungarian Empire. This is Laborius von Frank, Austro-Hungarian general, a little bit of this historical information. And then down here in the yellow, we get the, the, the extra kind of capacity they provide. One unit of choice under his command has a double move, move, attack, move. Which is pretty cool. So, and depending on which generals you have in action, you get these different capacities. Here we have the Kingdom of Montenegro fight, fights for Serbia. If the unit under his command is defending in the city, he turns a tide score in his favor. So, win Janko Vukovic. And so, yeah, really cool card set here. I think there's about probably about 20 of these in here. Kingdom of Serbia, different generals in their lives and some historical information. So really nice kind of touch of kind of history in here. Let's take a look at our map last here. I, I like the like the color palette on the map, and I'll unfold it here and show a zoomed out version as I do so, and then we'll kind of jump around a little bit and take a look at some of the elements of it here. It uh, footprint is 20 inches wide and 29 and a half inches on the vertical, so roughly 20 by 30. And we can see again that the combat, of course, this is World War I Serbia. So we're getting a nice big shot of Serbia in the middle of the board here with all the Serbian cities. And the win condition, there's a couple of knockout punches. If the Central Powers control all the Serbian cities as well as Montenegro and then hold them for a turn, they win. Likewise, if Serbia controls all of the Serbian cities and Montenegro and hold it for, holds it for a turn, Serbia wins. If neither of those conditions are met, it's whoever controls the most cities in Serbia and Montenegro at the end of the game. But yeah, I like the artwork. I like these little cool city graphics here. It's got a very kind of historical flair to it. I like the text choice and the color choice. And again, a nice thick mounted cardboard, mounted uh, map board here to play on. So with the unit standing up and single hexes and things like that, I feel like this is gonna be a game that plays fast. I'm looking forward to getting to this to the table. And um, I will come back and show some gameplay and then do a full review of this game coming up in the somewhat near future. So thanks for watching. If you've got any questions that I can answer, uh, I'd be happy to answer them. And if you have enjoyed this video, I'll put links up to the gameplay ones as soon as they are ready. Thanks everybody for watching March on the Drina, World War I and Serbia, Princeps uh, Games, their first war game. So thanks everybody, have a great day.